We are finally able to bring you, as we've been promising for a little over a week, direct from a overseas excursion to the PDRA, Australian door slammer racer, Mr. Russ Pavey. Good afternoon, Russell. G'day guys, how you doing? We're good. Uh, you might have to speak up a little for our viewers, if you can. Okay. Yeah, that's better. I've turned that's you up. Right, yeah. I've turned yeah. you up a little bit too, so it's okay. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. All right. Now, you've uh, got a fair bit to talk about with us. There's been a lot of happenings at the Pavey Ranch over the last six months, I guess, since that unfortunate uh, ending at the Winter Nationals. Yeah, look, there has been a lot going on here. Obviously, uh, crashing the car at Winter Nationals was a big blow to us. It's, uh, it's taken us a couple of months to uh, sort of find our feet uh, and sort of regroup a little. But, um, but we're busy here. Things are well underway. Um, so we're well on our way back to the track now. So um, as you know, it's a big job. But um, yeah, we won't be too long now. Okay, so in the initial discussions we had with you, you'd talked about perhaps um, front halving the car, then perhaps a whole new car. Where, where are you up to? Let us in on what's happening. Yeah, look, uh, we've had a couple of um, change of minds, to be honest. We started, we looked at the old car and felt that it was time to update it anyway. So we put the, the bench chassis aside and started work on, on a new frame. Um, but then sort of, again, the reality of, of getting a new car together sort of hit in and the exact number of hours that it takes to build a car. And as lots of people know, you know, there's thousands of hours in a car. And we really sort of felt that it meant that we were going to be up to the track quite a while so we sort of changed tack and dragged the old car back out again and had a look at it to see what it would take to um, decent shape and um, initially it wasn't as bad as what we sort of thought it, it actually was so we, we sent the car away to get front half and the car's due to come back next week so it's been rebuilt from the middle of the cabin area forward so um, from upper and lower frame rails from the middle of the car all the way to the front, um, new struts, new firewall, um, more or less like all the new eight pillars, all that sort of stuff. And naturally with that will come, you know, new steering, new, new tanks, um, and the remounting of about 50 different things, including the front loop. Okay. Um, were you able to resurrect much from the old car? I mean, we can see the, the body sitting there behind you and there's a door over in the, uh, in the, in the rear ground. So the, obviously you've said you, you've cut the chassis basically through the middle of the car, but what about, um, was one strut okay, fuel tanks, engine, gearbox, how did all that fare? Yeah, look, it, it, everything in the front half of the car's crushed. Um, the motor's had a pretty reasonable hit. It smashed off the, the mag and the fuel pump and a bunch of stuff around the front of the motor, including pulleys and idlers and all that sort of stuff. Um, we, we'll, we'll be able to sort all that stuff out. We're just working our way through it. Um, it's sort of surprising how many things have taken a hit. The um, ball length in the back of the car is bent as well. Um, when the back of the car's come around and hit the wall, we obviously need to buy rims and slicks in front. In terms of fiberglass, like the stuff behind us, the main body survived very well. It's just meant in this in this lower corner, it's, it's busted away in the, in the lower part of the guard. But that's like a few hours work just to finish that off. Doors are fine. The uh, the braids have the mould for 63 Corvette and um, they were very good to me and made a new front whip for the car. So the, the front whip of the car is just sitting out of shot here and it's waiting to go back on. So fiberglass wise were pretty good. Obviously we still need a trip to the paint shop and that sort of stuff, but uh, that, that's, that's fairly resurrectable. The rest of it we just got to work our way through. There, there are a hundred things that we just haven't had a chance to look at to see whether they're still serviceable or not. And as we start screwing stuff back on, we'll work our way through them, but obviously if it's not up to scratch, it's got to, it's got to come off the car. Um, these cars can't be anything less than 100%. The, uh, the consequences are too diabolical. But, um, but you asked before about the new car option, and, and to be honest, we haven't put the new car off the table. The material and the rest of the stuff to build the new car is still here. And certainly with some of the rule changes and stuff coming around, um, the release of the extreme outboard um, class regs, and a bunch of stuff like that really made us feel that a, a new car is inevitable. And that once we've got ourselves back on track, it's really our next port of call to focus our attention on. Okay, awesome. Well, that's very uh, enlightening.
enlightening as to understanding exactly where you're at and, and what path you're taking. So thanks, Russ. Um, okay, let's talk about America. You are over in the, you know, the, the land of the fastest door slammers in the world, PDRA style. Yeah. Um, how was that? Talk us through a little bit of the event that uh, you went and witnessed over there. Yeah, so we went to well, we went to two races. To be honest, the, the first race we went to was the US Nationals, which is something that Carolyn and I have had on our um, thing to do list for, for more than ten years. And it's a, and we all know and love our Winter Nationals and all that sort of stuff. And the US Nationals is the equivalent of that. So we went and uh, enjoyed that. Thought that was great. And then of course the following weekend was the PDRO race you were talking about um, down in a place called Benson in North Carolina. And it was at the Galop Motorsports um, new track, which is a fantastic facility sitting in the middle of a, of a cornfield, which is kind of, kind of strange in one way, but like it's really country, but the facility is just first class. They've spent, I don't know how much money, um, but the, the track is amazing. Um, full concrete, uh, eighth mile, everything's paved, concreted. It just, it's a dream track. Um, and the guys there are very cool, are welcoming. Um, Americans love Aussies, they're different, and they love listening to our accent, and uh, we don't mind listening to theirs too. So we met a bunch of great people there, and uh, we're truly impressed. The, the, class, the cars there at the PDRA, the competition is fierce, super fierce, and um, these guys don't hold anything back, whether it's time, effort, money, whatever. Like The PDRA race doesn't have a huge, huge schedule. But as in a lot of races, but certain effort these guys are putting in, you know, it's just it's just unbelievable. The track itself, um, and we all know how hard it is to to get a car to stick, to stick to a hot track. One of the days, the track temp was over 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is wow. just crazy in terms of uh, how hot a track can stick to. Yet these guys were still out there churning out incredible numbers and really sort of swinging for the fence. Um, so it was it was pretty impressive all around. Okay. So you spoke a bit fair about the track, the Galat facility. We've all been keeping an eye on its its build and it's yeah, it's, it certainly looks pretty awesome and great to hear that in in the flesh it's as good as as we've seen across the internet. Talk to us a little bit about the, the difference in the cars, Russ. I mean there's a lot of speculation around how they're super light, um, they're built for eighth mile, they're not built for quarter mile. Um, it was interesting that I, I didn't quite understand that because I was listening to Jason Scruggs in a um, Drag Illustrated interview with Wes and he was talking about that he'd gone 551 at only 199 miles an hour, turning it off at about 800 feet. So. Talk to us a little bit about what you saw in the difference in the the pro extreme cars to to what you're running and we're running in this country. Yeah, look, there is a big difference, and and I think you've got to be fair here. Um, our our top door slammer rules say that our minimum weight is twenty seven hundred pounds. Most popular combos around that five hundred and twenty one inch um, cubic inch here, which means our minimum weight is 27. So we're pretty, in fact, we're probably heavier than any other class, regardless of what, you know, NHRA, IHRA, whatever, BDRA. The Pro Extreme cars in America, the, the they have a minimum weight, but it's 2275, which is incredibly light. Um, you're really talking 450 pounds uh, lighter than, say, the car behind me. Um, and they, there is no, there's no limits on anything around making power. So... To give the viewers the clue, we run what they call a D-Rotor PSI, the charger that PSI make. They actually make a bigger one, which is called C-Rotor. Well, not only are they allowed to run the C-Rotor, which gives them a, a significant increase in boost and horsepower, but there's no overdrive limits. So what I saw over there in terms of um, PSI supercharged cars was I saw C-Rotor cup and the overdrive was 128 over, which is their maximum allowed. So to compare that, which is a legal Australian door slammer, we've got a D rotor, so a much smaller supercharger and turning much slower, so only 108 percent over. And I chatted to the guys about how much boost, how much PSI difference would it actually make, um, and they were very coy to say. But a couple of the engine guys sort of said that 
we would probably get between 14 and 18 pounds of boost difference. And when you consider a car like this has, has around 48 pounds of boost, really talking about 40% more power, if, if you're just talking on a complete percent more power than us. So if you consider they had 40% more power and then weigh 450 pounds lighter, you can understand that it's a big difference in between one car and the other. It was interesting talking to the boys about um, over there about choice of transmission. Um, and I suggest to you that 90% of the field all had converters in them. So this is instead of running a clutch, um, which can be you know difficult to tune, they were all running the latest style converters, which use a lock-up clutch. So they really grabbed hold of the best technology they could and were making the most of it. And that really comes into play. It's a bit of a long explanation, but it really comes into play when you're racing eight mile over quarter. So it's much, much harder for that um, eight clutch over quarter than it is running over an eight. So they, if you think about those three, you know, what they're doing is, um, but it is definitely a, a different, a different kettle of fish to what we run here in Australia. Okay, awesome. So you, based on what you've said with the weight and the overdrive and the supercharger, you really wouldn't be able to um, buy a tune-up or steal a tune-up while you were there because it wouldn't be that relative to what you're running back home. No, you, you really can't. The two is the use of electronics. So PDRA allows for traction control. So the um, most of the cars were fitted with a Davis Technologies um, traction control um, device called the Profiler, which is an exceptionally smart device, um, which is really making the most of all the power that they can make. Um, and, and, and that's something else that's significantly different. They, um, there's nothing there that you can sort of take from that and apply to us. We're, we're, we're heavier, we've less power, most of us are using clutches. Um, yeah, there, there, there was pretty slim pickings in terms of being able to compare one with the other. Okay, awesome. Now you said you, you spoke to a few guys over there. Who, who did you get to hang out with? Did you get to hang out with the cool kids? And, and did they know who Russ Pavey and Stewie Bishop and Victor Bray and all of the, our guys are? Or how did that all pan out? Yeah, look, I didn't really get to hang with anybody. Um, we had some buddies working with the, uh, with the Todd Cutterow team, which was kind of cool. So they were looking over their shoulder and we were looking over theirs. But obviously you need to be polite and respect um, their, their, their deal and their operation, which we, which we did. But we were also welcomed into plenty of bits. Um, most people, when they hear your accent, uh, are interested in having a chat with you. Most of them um, know that we've, we've got a, a ProMod style uh, race here and that sort of stuff. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a mutual respect thing. Um, but there really isn't a lot of interest from them to us. Um, and certainly there wasn't really any recognition of, of names. At the end of the day, I'm, I was just a spectator and, and enjoyed that immensely, you know, to, to bowl into their pits and, and have a chat to them about their car. And lots of the guys are really welcoming, you know, happy to talk about what's going on in their world and, and uh, the challenges that the car's given them at the moment and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Awesome. All right. And the last question I'll put to you, you sort of, you gave me a bit of a segue there a minute ago. You touched on the new Andra uh, Extreme Outlaw class. Obviously, that's something that you're... Keeping an eye too, what do you what do you see the the drive towards that from existing races, new races? How do you think it's going to go? It's really hard to say. I think most people will be along the same sort of position as Caroline and myself. When we when we talked about what was happening in the sport um, and the current division, at the end of the day, we are racers and we want to race the most amount of opportunities that we can. We need to provide our sponsors with the right right sort of exposure and we want to be able to do the best job we can. So to some degree, we need to make our car adaptable. The idea around the new car is, is that um, to give ourselves the option to jump between one series um, to another if we have to. Because if we say, okay, the, the current car can't come under 2,700 pounds because of the way it's built. So if we're an extreme outlaw, um, bracket, we're significantly disadvantaged. So we're looking to give ourselves the most amount of opportunities. And it really isn't political, it's really just about, well, okay, if we're going to do the right things by our sponsors and give ourselves the most amount of chances, 
then we need to be able to adapt to whatever's on offer at the time. Okay, awesome. So you'll see, we'll see the the Pavey Racing family in any any class that they can fit into in any track at any time. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose so. I, but you know, we we love the sport. We love to go racing. Um, any time we get to go racing is is cool. So it is. We are like that. It sounds cruel when you say, "Oh, we'll go anywhere, anytime." But it, but yeah, I suppose <laughs> probably just hussies at the end of the day. <laughs> I, Robert I, Maggs has asked a question. I wasn't implying that at all, mate. I wasn't <laughs> implying that at all. But just one sec. Nick's popped in and she's uh, she said we've got a question. So uh, Robert Maggs is asking, what rear slicks are you guys running? Oh, are they running over there? Sorry. So in the US. Ooh, don't tell me we've lost yeah, the, uh, yeah. ah, enough, back. There, there was a, a bit of a mix. I'll be too happy. Yeah, we've got you, mate. Okay. Yeah, look, there was a, there was a mix, um, and it was interesting n- noticing that there was some tire support on some of the cars, you know, and uh, obviously there was the like, brand in the back of the car that suited uh, the sponsor sticker on part of it. But uh, but Hoosier was still a, a, a fairly popular slick, and I noticed that in um, especially we all know how our t- that a number of the teams were making tire brand cho- changes um, during the during the course of eliminations and and qualifying. So there's obviously something in it, in as much as you know how certain certain cars behave in different temperatures. Okay, and I'll add to that question: Are, are they gone to the 36 inch um, funny car tires, or are they still running 34 and a halves? Yeah, there was a mix of both. There was a mix of both. So so definitely there was some 36 inch stuff there. Um, and, and some some of the guys are a little bit coy as in, you know, the the, the cars push deep into the uh, into the transporter awning and you know you, you're lucky to get within twenty feet of the back of it. So it's a bit hard to see sort of tire sides and, and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, there was thirty six a bit plenty of thirty four and a half too. So it seemed as though there were one dominant theme there. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, I think we've uh, taken up more than enough of your time. You've no doubt got plenty to do after your holiday away and the car sitting behind you is obviously going to take some hours and hours to get back together. As you said, the, the chassis, when did you suggest you were expecting that back? Yeah, we think we'll get that back next week. So looking forward to that and getting busy. So the, the current plan is to, to work as, as swiftly as we can. Um, time and money is uh, is always a challenge for every team, so we'll do that as quickly and as um, and as efficiently as we can. And we really hope to go testing here um, locally uh, at Willowbank um, within the next couple of months, and and see if we can't have ourselves on song and ready to go. Most likely, it will be that uh, that New Year series uh, meeting at Willowbank in January that we'll will actually be ready to race. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, if anybody's got any questions for us that they, when you watch this back later tonight, uh, just type them into our window and we'll get them through to us and get them answered for you. So that's that's for a Friday. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Uh, there's plenty of racing on out there. The Atura Championship's up in Sydney um, and a lot more. But we'll say goodbye to our good friend Russ now and we'll see you all next week. Thanks so much, guys. Ciao.